All right, it is that time of year again. The GSSR. Right now, we're doing it for NA, and at JPs will come in the next month. But before I start breaking it down, I just wanted to say that I am actually going to be doing a GSSR giveaway. Uh, in the pink comment, oh wow, there, really bad. Uh, in the pink comment, uh, you will find a link to this Gleam giveaway. Uh, the entries are follow on Twitch uh view on youtube but i will say straight up you need to be subbed to be for me to pull you uh if you are not subscribed to the channel it's going to be a reroll. but the requirement here is just visit but you have to be subbed uh and after this it's gonna there's gonna be like two extra twitter things retweet like so if you guys want a gssr for yourself without having to sp spend the money yourself I will be like, wow, my, uh, let's get that done. Uh, I will be spending my own money on this. Uh, I try to do at least one giveaway a year and I've been doing this since Destiny and I just figured the GSRs are the time to do it. Uh, I will be doing something similar for JP, maybe not as many. I feel JP is gonna be a little more desired just because a lot of people aren't actually able to buy quartz on JP. I am able to. Uh, so look at, out for that in the future. But yeah, uh, join this giveaway. I'm doing it just to help people that aren't uh, able to do it. And if you are not able to purchase your GSSRs on, in your home country, uh, I have no problems doing it on my streams. You just are gonna have to send me the money. I'm, I, I'm not out here buying GSSRs or any Tom, Dick, and Harry who just walks into stream. You got to send me the money, but I have no problems uh, doing it for you. And it could either be me loading up the quartz or me just pulling it on stream. I have no, like, it's up to you. All right. So now that that shilling is out of the way, let's get started on the GSSR. So first off, what is a GSSR? A GSSR is you spend typically around $12 to $15 USD and you are guaranteed to have a five star unit in that multi. When you consider that uh, a lot like the pity is 900, so you realistically could spend 400 plus dollars on it, depending on your country, it could be even higher. A GSSR is a extremely appealing option. Like you have a choice of getting like one of your favorite units and the chances aren't the highest. Like this GSSR is actually like pretty tame in terms of like what we've seen in the future. Like some of them actually have like three units on one banner. Like they really start uh, diversifying where units are. So you have way more choices. Now, am I telling you to spend money? No, no, you don't have to spend money. But if you are going to spend money, this would be the time to do it, which is pretty much a sentiment of like pretty much everyone. Like if you are guaranteed to beat the odds and turn a three, like a 0.8% into a 100%, uh, like I would take that. Well, granted it's not 100. So like realistically, if you want to think of it, you're taking a like 0.6% when it's on rate up or is it 0.8 and turning it into a 20% chance of you getting the SSR you want, uh, 12%, uh, 16, 25%, 25, 16, 20, 16, uh, this would be 11%, six, uh, 16, 12.5 and 16. So, and remember, these are all limited servants. I don't believe you can actually get spooked on a GSSR. And even if you could, you would still be getting, you would still be getting a, one of these guaranteed units. It is not uncommon for you to get, it's kind of uncommon, but it is possible for you to get multiple different servants on the banner. You're lucky. That's where luck comes in. I am personally lucky enough that I have gotten multiple units off GSSRs. Uh, 
multiple times. That is actually how I got Oberon on my main JP account. I got Bunyan and I got Oberon in the same banner. So don't give up hope that you're like mid multi that, oh no, I'm stunning on this banner and I pulled Abigail. There's still a chance just that you could get another unit on here. There's also the chance to get MP2 of the unit, uh, which for Abigail, I, I'm pretty sure a lot of people would definitely be salty with who else is on here. Um, it's not that Abigail is that bad. It's just that everyone else on on this one in particular is a fucking monster. Like literally best in class for what they do. Uh, all right. So now that I've kind of explained like what a GSSR actually is, let's get started on the units for the GSSR. So first bags. And if you see like, as you see here, like the four star units, all you can get all of these units on either of these two banners so that by default makes these banners kind of pretty unappealing because the only units here and by the way uh the three stars count for what is in your bag so i know i'm like kind of scatterbrained here you're only going to see the three star units that are here, meaning you can get story lock units. But if you are specifically looking for like story locked units, you want to be going on these GSSRs because while yes, they are like here, like Asclepius, red hair, uh, they are still, they are in this pool. But if you're looking for them specifically, you can go on these banners. So if you don't, have never gotten a copy of Asclepius, this is probably one of a is a good chance to get a copy of him, but it's not going to be the best. You, you probably should be summoning on a banner where he's on rate up, not on a GSR looking for Asclepius. Okay, so um big bias on this one, because I have one, two, three. And I think they are very good for what they are, but they are definitely not the strongest units on these banners. The pure amount of bloat that is on these like early servants is absolutely ridiculous. Like all of these, most of these five star or four stars are either story locked or permanent. I, if I'm looking for bang for my buck, I would not be summoning on these banners just because I could get some of these unit units here normally. Uh... Oh, wait. Uh... Wait, is this does this one also guarantee? Oh, no. OK, yeah, you are guaranteed a four star. So yes, even so while you could get a uh, Saber Altar, you could also get any one of these other ones, which that pool is just too big. Like for both these pools, if you were to go for a unit from here, I would say Gilgamesh, uh, Nero Bride for this one are like the hot ones that are just always going to be good. Like Gilgamesh is a fucking monster. Uh, he gets power mod against like literally half this like most of the servants in the entire game so his uh aoe mp hits like a single target if not exceeds it mine definitely exceeds it because he is like maxed out shisho will get a big uptime in like how like how usable her niche actually is by being able by having a unit that comes up that is actually able to apply uh, the undead trait because her, her, uh, let me go here. It's not one power mod uh, for divine or undead. It is two separate power mods that give you like, that give you extra damage. This, these two combined would triple her damage or would triple her face card damage. So the turn that you're actually able to pull this off, you do really disgust, like disgusting things. Like just divine for my Shisho with like double Scotty and her own buffs. She's hitting like, again, and this is against Gilgamesh. She's legitimately hitting 
ton, like over a hundred thousand, and that is with a CE that doesn't give anything but like raw attack. Uh, then again, my Shisho is MP2. She is like a lot better than most other uh, Shishos in the game. So that is an exception, not the case. Four Horsemen. X is hilarious. Uh, but she's not the biggest need you need. Uh, the biggest servant niche you need. It, like it's more from a meme and it's just like it just happens to be that they buffed it so much that it's like less of a meme and more a legit strategy like she hits so fucking hard against sabers like she's like now these days she's actually like anti-saber uh kentucky really good for like one shotting something but like not someone you really need uh raiko needs buff amakusa very good for what he is uh but he is his damage is held back by the fact that he's a ruler but like him like in challenge quest situations it helps him so much that he's a ruler because he just is so tanky like he's like legitimately going to be able to pop off and buff strip more than once dante's gets absolutely ridiculous with his buff and being able to be a, a five-star avenger that can touch black rail uh which which is like ri ridiculously high damage like this is this is literally like matching melison when she hits type neutral so obviously you would not bring dante's to fight like archers you would bring melison but like literally pretty much every other node that is 333 you would probably get more out of using dante's than melison but that is not taking into consider consideration like the buster crits and all that so it like there is give and take with it but dante's he requires you having scotty he requires you having scotty and oberon to hit that damage but melison requires you having bitch and oberon to hit that damage so it, it, you like you can't you can't you have to compare the apples to apples you can't just uh say oh yeah Dante's doesn't hit as hard uh, without Oberon. Well, yeah, Melison doesn't even function without Oberon. So what? What? What's your argument? What's your argument? Dante's can hit those numbers with another Scotty. He doesn't, uh, or close numbers with another Scotty. He doesn't need Oberon. Jolter, she is about to get her buff. It is going to be like thirty for like for her kit specifically. Uh, she does so well with getting this extra damage scaling and then 30 stars to like literally crit people down and since she has this ridiculous star weight for her i mean it's not 5000 but they probably will start like she doesn't exactly need the 5000 but like when she crits on this her mp goes up very very high like for a year one servant they actually designed her so well uh she doesn't have the best hit count like across the board but it's still like looks somewhat modern uh let's talk about the four stars and i'm only talking about the sport story lock one uh salter i think can do uh like some double oberon stuff i think uh yeah so I think she can do Vich farming, but you have to start with a 60% charge. Uh, yeah, you would have to start with a 60% charge. You would need man loading. Or you start with a K-scope and suffer from slightly lower damage. But Salter is not exactly a good farmer for a Vich. Like, her, her, her kit is not suited well for Vich. She can't double stack most stuff and her attack buff is laughable in comparison to other units she can do the job but like you would have an easier time using siegfried to do it although not right now when he gets this buff yes but not right now 
Uh, Umu been on raid up a couple times. Uh, Lartoria, Alter or Lalter. She just got her charisma buffed, which needs to happen to Salter. And she's not farming yet, but I mean, she can kind of be like a buff away from it. We'll see. Uh, at least you and I don't have good. I don't have a good uh, relationship with him. I'm I'm not a fan of his kit. I don't like what I don't like one turn uh, like this. At least you in this case is like literally everything is one turn. Like at least she show uh, at the very least her crit damage is three turns. Her star weight is three turns. She has some uh, sur like survivability besides the three turns and also scotty gives her three turn buffs like lee shuin also gets the three turn buffs from artoria but i think his hit counts are like they're not the lowest but they're not super high yeah like if you're looking for three turn a three turn art servant like melison would kind of just serve you well and his overcharge doesn't really do much I, I, and I know that's compares, comparing a uh, five star to a four star, but like, like Melisin is like an, a better arts lancer single target. So if you are going to look, if you need that, you should be summoning on Melisin's banner. Uh, Edison gets rate ups kind kind of often. Same with Medea Lily. And that's kind of all the story locked. Uh, wait, is that one, two? Oh, Tristan's story locked, and he just got a buff. Uh, but Bobbinsy, uh, Bovensi, or Bobbinsy, just came out, and I personally think she's a little better than Tristan at base. But I mean, his his buff does help. He does have a flat fifty and our buff. All right, moving on to the next banner. Arthur. If they let him Buster Farm, he is actually going to be a fucking monster. Because he is like fully double stacking. He is fully double stacking this, and you can do this turn too. Along with this, for if he doesn't kill, he can possibly refund off it. He'll have 60%. Uh, double stacking crit damage and popping so many stars like if you do not kill with Arthur like what like you're gonna leave him probably one shot and then he's just gonna like face card and like actually get back to his MP and then like th this it mm, the 20% and this is so specific I feel like they could definitely give they should give, definitely give this a buff but it's up to them make him buff this up to 30 and make him able to buster farm or up the mp and somehow make him able to buster farm it all of like salter put 10 percent here it doesn't fix all his problems but it'll fix some of them uh, i feel buffing this battery would be better in the long term uh for people using him getting him like actually using him uh but this and then buffing it up actually might help him better in the short term it all depends on people's perception on him i kind of feel like he doesn't really have that much of a place right now but when he hits his niche he hits so hard he's gonna be he is truly going to be a monster if they if he is not held back by this anymore again in regular challenge quests where this part comes up this is what I'm saying isn't an issue. Like, I'm not having a 20% battery. It's like non-issue, especially if you're not using Oberon. It doesn't matter that much. Uh, in a challenge quest, you would probably be able to refund back without having to use both Fitch's batteries by him getting hit or him base guarding and getting gem back. Like, I think Arthur can be really, really good. He's just like not in the meta. Musashi, very good very hard hitting saber and with her buff like her hit count is doubled through three turns instead of one she feels good squirt toria one of the best looping art single target archers but that's not saying much 
uh, her damage is not, she's not hitting that hard in comparison to some of the other competition. She just loops ridiculously easy and you're just spamming that. Which if you like, if you put black girl on it, she, she will hit hard. Don't get me wrong. She will hit hard, but her kit is, they need, they need to give her a buff just because like she is a year one servant. Like she has not been touched in years Bes besides like the meta changing. Like they can use Stan to like actually buff her up some and give her something. Ishar. I think Ishar needs a buff. I think her skills are being handed out to other servants at this point. Uh, like namely her charisma. It is literally being handed out to other servants at either the same or a lower cooldown. Same. Like one of the servants that just came out from Paper Moon literally has Ishar skill, but with an extra effect, it's not exactly a good effect but it can be helpful in the right situation. Uh, so her charisma can probably go up or uh, they make it so she's able to do black rail looping, which she has been falling behind. Ishar has been falling behind. She used to be at the top. Now she's not at the top, but her competition is definitely starting to pass her up. This is better than I thought it was actually. Um, and what I mean by that is that these two have niches that explode their damage that Ishtar literally can't touch with a 10 foot pole. The same for Napoleon. Like while on paper here, her numbers look better than some other servants. She does not have a niche to exploit. Thus, it, it, like her damage is gonna suffer. She's super consistent and definitely the easiest uh, Buster Farmer to actually do Buster Farming simply because she has a 50% battery. But she's not going to be hitting the hard, hardest damage. And this is with a buffed MP. Uh, she, the only, only way I see her like getting back to it, like her raw damage actually starting to compete with uh, Gil, and, Gil, Tesla, and Napoleon with uh, their niches active is if they let her touch Black Bull. Which can happen in challenge quests. It's just, you're not going to see it in farming. And even in challenge quests, you, you're going to be relying on RNG for a bunch of uh, farting reasons. Moriarty is good, just not strongest again, single target archer. It's, it's, it's not looking good for them. Tamamo gets a buff. I am biased towards Tamamo. I love Tamamo. But also, Vich is coming out, and then I know when she gets her third skill buff, which makes her far, far better. Like, she does not get stunned, and she gets a 30% battery, along with all this good shit. If you're gonna summon, if you want to get Tamamo Shark, uh, and witness the polygamous castration fist in game all the time, wait for the Bunyan event to come out next year. Well, where she will get that buff. Uh, and next one, Miyu, very good single target caster, works very well in buster farming, can hit like really good damage. Uh, she is slow perky because it's Hylia. Because of course she's gonna be perky. Yeah, mana burst is one turn and then suspicious medicine fucking, uh, fucking Ruby. Ruby is a plague. Merlin is literally just as bad as Ruby. In terms of character, in terms of gameplay, he is absolutely amazing and enables a lot of comps. He was the OG unit to help servants buster farm back when it wasn't a real thing. Now it's going to be. And yeah, like you can pull Merlin off your support list, but you need Castoria uh, and Merlin. I mean, not Merlin, Morgan uh, to really take advantage of like some of his skill set for invincible comp. But Vich kind of, kind of fulfills a similar role in that he roids out, that he roids out Buster units and their crit damage, 
Vich does that half, but you're mostly supposed to be using two Viches. These days, you're not supposed to be using two, two Merlins because it's not going to do that much for you. You'd be like, if you're looking for protection, you'd be using Merlin with Castoria. Uh, but if you're looking to up lesser damage, you would be using him and then swap out with two bitches to like really, really ramp up that crit damage. Uh, crit damage is only one turn though, Satch. Uh, yeah, he is a good pickup. I just think there is way too. This is literally the big, the biggest banner that has the most servants. You're not gonna pull anyone here that you want. More likely than not. Again, the odds are 11 percent. While here they are 25 percent. You are statistically more likely to get what you want on these two banners, which is their like. Besides the units on it, their main strength is how small the banners are. Da Vinci. She gets better as a support, a support recently. Uh, she's not, she's kind of mixed up in what she wants to do right now on NA. Cleo, Cleo, she is decent, but the game isn't really structured for her. She's not able to secure her Imperial privilege. So most of the time it's just a heal. They have been buffing this up a lot recently though. So there's a good chance Cleo gets a buff in the future, like a very strong chance. Like Imperial Privilege is not a super common skill, but they have buffed both the highest rank and the lowest rank. So that literally means everyone else that has a skill like this is up for getting a buff, including Ozzy. I don't know. I don't think they're going to actually buff Ozzy because he's actually able to get his Imperial Privilege. I think he is the one unit that is probably never going to get it buffed. And I think it's also because his is no, his is 42 uh yeah cleo is very good in challenge quests but most of the time you're not fit, like needing to worry about a challenge quest against a rider uh yeah and she's also buster so she, bitch hasn't been out yet she will get better soon like her kit is definitely very well tailored to boss fights but the game just isn't there right now to support her it will be very soon though king Hassan, very good single target assassin he wants to be like your anchor though he really wants to be your anchor like yes you will be able to like three turn farm with him against like riders you are going to be able to do that he has the battery he has the good numbers but <sighs> he is going to have like for his like for the three turns he's gonna have 80 percent up no matter what it's just that a lot of the skill doesn't matter if you're if he's not like by himself or anchoring or taking a lot of hits and his mp doesn't do much it is it doesn't have a normal effect and then it's overcharged like this is a very bad mp in my opinion because over death proc doesn't happen that often it's hilarious when it does I always burst out laughing when I death proc someone, but it's not happening anytime soon. It's not going to happen again, Servant. Etchon, arguably the best single target berserker for dealing with like sabers in particular, like especially good saber, but it is only saber class servants, not saber like enemies. So. Her damage is held back by that, but she got a good power mod. So now she had like, if you're fighting a good saber, these two actually do multiply because this is super effective damage. This is a power mod. They multiply with each other. Little good that she doesn't have MP damage in her kit because MP damage adds in with power mod. Uh, But I mean, like she hits so fucking hard. You'd still use You'd either use Black Girl or something really good for a quick unit that gives him MP gain and quick up to like really help at Chan. Like, because she, her, if her quick cards were better, she would be very, very strong. Like, her quick cards are weak because she's a Berserker and the hits are lower, but her base MP gain is so ridiculously high. Her refund, her MP refunds a lot of does a lot of the work and our quick cards are just kind of there to supplement it 
she she really is like a really like an outstanding example of like how good mighty chains can be because her like her arts card if she crits on this is going to <laughs> probably get her whatever wherever she isn't in, in terms of uh mping it will probably get the job done eg kata the the low hp meme and like he does the damage so fucking well uh What can like what can I say? Like at max overcharge, he literally does double. He like he does double his MP damage. It's and then you also are getting like ridiculous like crit damage. That if you are able to double stack his shit and like actually get his HP like low for these MPs, holy fuck. Like, and there are ways to do this. Like, you could chain gong. Oh, what the heck? You could chain gong to get his HP, like, super low and then do, like, all the other shit. There, like, there are ways to set up Hijikata to do a lot of big damage, but you have to, like, really build it. You're doing it for a meme. Hijikata is mostly not practical in most cir circumstances because you you're going to have to have a backup. He's a, he looks just so cool when he does it. Kiara, very, very, very strong unit for challenge quests if you're fighting uh, foreigners or cavalry class. Like, she buffs, what, what, she buff strips, debuff resist, arts res, battery, uh, drain, all this shit. And then heals for like literally most of her MP every time she MPs, along with having invo person defense spears. Like, oh yeah, and then she just has super effective damage against rulers or class slight uh, offensive class advantage against rulers. Like she, like a ruler was a cavalry class. Like, Kiara is very very just very strong they they buffed her so much that she is so strong for challenge quests uh if there are a whole bunch of trash mobs and if you just need someone that is like tanky like kiara gets the job done if you pair her with tomomo like you're probably not like you might get hit you might take a lot of damage but you're not gonna die you're gonna heal like ridiculously like fast from that uh melt i like melt i like her a lot She's very, very similar to like an Okita. Oh, right. I... I'm sorry I didn't actually go through these. Uh, but yeah, like these two. Okita is like very good. Uh, but these two are much more conditionally good, uh, especially Brynn. I think Brynn is the worst one here. Yeah, I just realized that I completely like skipped over like three of these. Uh, Okita is like very good. It's just like her buffs are so fucking weird. It's not even funny. Like it, it, you really don't know what they want you to do with her, whether you want to face her before or MP or not. Uh, but back to Melt. Uh, her main weakness, because she has gotten literally all of her skills buff. She looks so good. But her main weakness is her MP. Uh, very much like Saber Okitan, but I mean not Saber Okitan. Alter Ego Okitan, like OG Okitan. Uh, the best part of her MP happens after damage. So buff strip after damage. Sad, but it's still cool that she does it. You just kind of have to like make sure you kind of have to like spec for it, like give her invo purse or something. Because uh, for me, like I don't really care about. Like I like the uh, the buff strip. For a very spammable MP like Melt is not hard to get back up to 100. Uh, like her refund is very, very good. Like these hit counts with the MP gain, she's very similar to, uh, again, why I went back, uh, Okita. Like very sim high MP gain, high hits on all her, on the cards that matter. Uh, yeah, she, she's gotten so many buffs. She's so much better than when she came out. But MP buff, make this proc before damage, make this proc before damage, and they don't have to add any other effects. They just need to make these proc first. 
Like this and this ramp up is weak. This is weak ramp up and I just want them to make it proc first that, and that's it. On to these servants for uh, like pulling on the banner. There are a lot more limited servants. We have the summer servants here. Uh, we have Passion Lip and Gorgon, and we have Martha, but those are the only story lock servants. And outside of Ryder Mordred, like, mm, like, I don't want to say they're forgettable because, like, I've seen like some stuff with Ryder, uh, Martha, like, coming back. Like, she is very, like a very hard hitting single target Ryder, if I'm not mistaken, with a fairly good niche, like, uh, ruler. Yeah, like she can hit very, very high damage uh, that you can spec to. And her niche is not like she shows. It is like so wide. It is divine, demon, and undead. Like, I think it sucks she has demon and not demonic, but like you would understand why she's supposed to be like a, a saint. She would be more catered to demons especially a western scene she'd be more catered towards demons than demonic enemies because like all yokai are technically demonic if i'm not mistaken for story lock three stars like this is appealing if you want like high copies of columbus or taiga this is the banner to go for it like you are more likely to get like so many copies of them you might get all the ones you need and all the coins you need and like i like i understand if you'd be doing this mostly for the coins but this is not one you should be going for if you want a specific unit they're not if you need a new unit sure for me i have like half of these units so that it isn't wise for me to actually summon on here but for most people they don't have all the units and because the odds are so low if you are looking for a new unit you have a fairly good chance of getting a new unit. Some of these GSRs aren't for getting the strongest unit that will make your count better. Most of the time, I'm going for new units because new units is more fun for me than just like letting my uh, better, my stronger units just do a little more damage or unlock servant coins. I think that's more of an issue with servant coins than like getting extra copies. Ooh, this video is going to be longer than I thought. Uh, I was supposed to start streaming like 15 minutes ago. Uh, but, you know, making breakfast, making coffee, it happens. All right, next banner, Sigurd, Ereshigal, Holmes, Okitan, Abigail, Hokusai. I'm going to be straight up, Ereshigal and, like, Holmes are the best units on here, and these, these three in particular need buffs desperately. Like, Ogitan looks good, can do farming, but her MP is still, like, the biggest, like, sticking point. And now Tiamat is in the game, and there is no... <sighs> she's, a, she's a better face card looper than Tiamat, but, like, the damage Tiamat can, like, get is... outclasses Ogitan by a country mile. Like, she needs her MP buffed. Uh, Hokusai is just, like a little awkward with her gains but she's still very good but Arash, very good buster farmer going to get an mp buff very soon that like doesn't let her compete with meta Melison in a lot of the cases and it's just because of how Arash's kit is built but she is much better in a boss fight than Melison. like you would want a all like taking hits than having uh, Melison like nuke because after Melison nuke she's going to sleep and she's not waking up. Arashigal is gonna like stay alive, provide such good things for your team that I think she's one of the units like you actually do want like she I don't think she's invincible comp, but she is someone that like you would want 
with yeah, party defense, MP gen, max HP. You want cooldown reduction, but her surviving with Merlin isn't the worst thing. Uh, Holmes, extremely good servant for what he is. But, A, he's going to have a banner right before this. Uh, but his MP. Ignore, like, reduces defense. Gives ignore invincibility. Gives ignore defense and upscript damage by 50%. This is one of the strongest support MPs for challenge quests. Simply because of, like, being, like, a unit like, uh... What are we just talking about this? Melt. You give Melt invul pierce and defense built pierce, and then you give her crit damage, and she, like that solves a good portion of her problems. She removes buffs after damage. Most of the buffs people really care about are invul and defense. If she can just pierce through it, like it doesn't matter if she's removing the buffs after damage. They're not gonna matter for her like actually doing damage. He helps mitigate and enables you using Black Rail in challenge quests when otherwise you would probably be using a more specific CE for it that gives defense pierce or invul pierce. Sigurd, I hate how they buffed him. They need to do another buff to like actually fix his shit. Uh... And Abigail, I need, think, needs cooldown reduction on her MP to, like, really make her, like, better. Because her, her skills are good, but their cooldowns are just too atrocious for her to be used in, like, more scenarios. Like, you would have to be using Tom Mo constantly. You would have to be, like, and it doesn't help. She has an art, triple arts deck and doesn't get good refund. Next banner. Oh, boy. Uh, made alter, reload memes, very fun, uh, but not the strongest season. Ivan, Ivan is ridiculously strong for an AoE rider. Like, top dogs for AoE, like for riders for boss fights are Ozzy, and I would, uh, Ivan is definitely up there. Like, he has exactly the kind of kit you would want for a boss fight. Power mod, MP gen, battery, debuff cleanse, stars per turn, buster performance, invul, attack down, buff strip, uh, buster res down, MP damage. This man has like has it literally all. You bring him to fight. Uh, he has power mod against lawful and chaotic. These two are never gonna overlap, so it it, gave, it basically gave him free. Power mod against like literally uh, every servant in the game, except for servants that are like neutral alignment. Uh, yeah, let's see right here. Yeah. So it gave him power mod against two thirds of the game, but this la like the last third is like, when I say third, not as in like an actual fraction, but like grouping grouping the units together uh this is neutral is literally the smallest it has the fewest number of servants in it by country mile there are a good number of neutral servants but a lot of the ones you're more familiar with are either lawful or chaotic Umu Bride, it is extremely hard to justify her as a three star or a, as a buster farming caster simply because Q caster exists and you can do his farming and do better damage. Uh, I think without a CE, I'll, I will double check that, but I think without uh, him using Black Grail is barely uh lower than her using abundancy 
and that's without any kind of plug suit. So yeah, yeah, like in the same kind of setup, he hits like twice her damage, and it kind of wouldn't matter at that point if he was MP1 or 5, because if he was MP1, his damage would, a, like A, he wouldn't even be able to do this Black Rail setup, and B, like he it would probably be doing about the same damage for less cost and just be more fun. Like, like, like Kukaster is like so fun to use and much more. Uh, Scotty. This is desirable just for Scotty, but we do know Ruler Scotty comes out literally next year. Uh, OG Scotty is still very good. If you, any servant that has uh, triple quick, you would not use Ruler Scotty for it because the Ruler Scotty barely buffs them. She doesn't buff the quick damage. She only buffs up quick cards. Uh, so Jack, any servant with triple, uh, with double, triple quick or double arts, double quick prefers OG Scotty than Ruler Scotty, but Ruler Scotty kind of just like helps quick servants go a little faster. Semi Rammies. Ah. <sighs> she could be so good potentially. They just do not want to buff her that much. It is good that she got this MP buff, but her damage is, uh, last I checked, kind of laughable. Yeah, she is beaten out by a welfare servant that is using Super Scope. <sighs> yeah, that's that, that's not that good. Granted, she does do about the same damage as Vich does in her normal setup, so it's not like she's hitting that low, but you gotta remember, this is debuff. This is with a debuff. So if this does not land, uh, damage isn't gonna be that good. Damage is, uh, damage is probably gonna drop down here. So, uh, this, this can be a little misleading. J just a bit. I think she is like fairly hot. I like uh, what she represent, rep what she represented in Apocrypha. Because Apocrypha like had so many of the, the so many situ characters were very had similar uh, issues, like similar situations in history that Apocrypha was just a melting point of. Some of these servants just getting closure uh, and just living their lives. Uh, yeah, so let's go back to their four stars. Uh, Fujino is on here. Fran. Uh, Yagyu. Raiko. Nito Chris. And Nobu are story locked, so is so is Salieri. Oh, right, and uh, Queen of Sheba. But if I'm being honest, none of the servants on none of the four stars on here like really, really stand out. I think Chiron is like very good, but he's permanent, not story locked. All right, so at this point, we are on to summer three and servants post lost belt 2. so first up that shows here benny enma i think benny is very good for like high damage crit servant not exactly looping uh she can do it but you're more bringing her because she has power mods uh and to fight chaotic evil alignment uh, there aren't that many Lancers that are Chaotic Evil. But for Berserkers, there are a bunch of them. And if you're only looking at Chaotic, there are still more Lancers. Uh, yep, Lancers, Chaotic. Uh, 
evil is probably where where she's gonna get more of her niche uh, lawful chaotic evil yeah uh yeah you're not you're not often gonna get like both of combined but when you do they're mo like even type neutral like benny emma is gonna be a very strong option because this is 80 percent power mod 80 percent power mod base uh so 80 percent more damage that you normally wouldn't be getting but she has not been buffed i could absolutely seeing her see her getting a buff sometime in the future but Two years from now, she's not getting a buff. Jarcher, very strong AoE archer farmer. However, there is a servant coming out in October called Zenobia. I think she is a far stronger and more accessible option than Jarcher because you are way more likely to get coins for Zenobia than you are Jarcher because she's going to be permanent. And her refund strategy she gets 20% back every turn, so you don't have to fully loop 100% every time like you do Jarcher. And you are it like and she also has crit damage in her kit so that if she doesn't kill, she is going to kill with the, her face cards. Jarcher kind of hits like a wet noodle. Uh, if you ever use her and she needs a face card, she does not do good, good crit damage. Zenobia does not have that problem. Uh, if she is slightly underpowered, she is going to. She ramps up crit damage with MP. Uh, that should tell you enough for how hard she can actually hit. Uh, Shi Wang D, Kishi Wang. This guy is just really, really good as a solo servant. When Mighty Chains come out, he is going to be amazing because he like his main problem is that he ramps up crit damage like this, but he doesn't have a way to like give himself stars. His biggest buff with like on his MP with him getting like star gen and him getting an MP buff like and then just adding stars per turn would be the most mild buff for him because like they I don't think they don't buff self buffing skills like this. Uh not often like the one that comes to mind is john and they did they didn't even did they touch the scaling on her mp like that would probably be the biggest example of this like when they buff support mps do they actually change the base value the answer is no they don't they can just add a normal effect. They do like unlike DPS servants, they do not have to increase the scaling. So it would be the most mild buff if they gave him like 10 stars per turn as like a function on his MP. But keep in mind he'd be able to ramp that up. And like that would make him like by default able to loop his MP better if he has more stars. Obviously, you can. He functions very well with support, like, like supports on the field too. He is not just a solo servant. He like he with that star weight, he is able to function in teams. He kind of does shine very much in teams, but him as a solo servant, you give him a guts, he's gonna do very very well for you. Mao Nobu, this is her damage is ridiculous if you're fighting sky attribute like type neutral there is like very few servants that are touching like nobu's damage uh calculate with all chance based mana burst failing oh oh no no, no that's spish art here here is nobu this is type neutral damage and then also uh sky attribute it assumes you have burning battlefield and super effective against divine so divine is very widespread and she is an extra class so she can hit uh 
all of these servants except two for very, very strong, super effective damage and then not have to worry about taking super effective damage herself. Like when she gets her buff with, I believe, Gouda Gouda 5 rerun. She is, and that buff is her being able to Buster Farm. She is going to be very, very worth your time. She is stacking a lot of good shit. Turn three, you're gonna have, you're gonna have a 70% and a 50%. You're gonna have 120% attack added. She stacks stuff really, really well. If she was able to touch Black Rail, uh, whew, whew. the amount of multiplicative multiplicative buffs going on with Malnu would be ridiculous if she was actually if she was using Black Rail. Oh boy, King Protea, very good for meme setups uh, and stalling. Like your HP gets so fucking high, and then they play on that. And you get MP damage for every growth, uh, for every stack of growth. So you can get 100% MP damage with King Protea at some points. Now, this takes so long to get up and running, and you kind of do have to protect her a little bit at the start. But if this is the way you like to play, uh, like stalling not and not worrying about things, King Protea is the unit for you. It's n it's not for everyone that plays FGO because a lot of people want to go like pretty fast. You got a lot of shit to do. King Perte isn't that bad, and her buff makes her hit very very hard. Summer BB is infamous for her card blocking. You can get around a lot of servants that are especially quick servants that are heavily heavily like balance around them having shit around you having shit card rng and not being able to like pop buffs she locks down the cards if you have a quick servant that say comma like bb card lock with comma allows you to fully loop your mp with quick, like scotty quick buffs like constantly going at at it you when you're card locking with bb you do not need to go mighty chains you are using those servants strongest cards but again very rng dependent bb is known for setups she is you don't use her in farming like this and unfortunately she's also not able to use because of the cooldown of this skill being seven even though it's a 50 percent battery 50% MP damage for three turns, 20% buster. The cooldown on it for on it is so long you have to use a super scope. You are not able to use like you're not able to use like a better CE. And it's a shame. Because her damage actually got kind of like would be good. She has so much uh stuff multiplying with each other. But at the very least, she isn't Abigail. That That's at the very least, she isn't Abigail. Is harsh. But BB scale, scales better with Oberon than Abigail. Not that much better, though. Not that much better. Yeah, it, like BB is screwed because of her cooldown. Unfortunate, but that's how it is. Uh, if you want her as a support, cool. If you want her to be farming, just know that her damage is not going to be the highest. Her her buff, like that's crazy that she actually used to hit lower than Summer Abigail. That that, but this extra attack buff or this uh, self mod buff that up that gave her an attack buff lets her have crit stars. She's like good as a crit servant. It's just her MP it doesn't hit the hardest. It's a whole lot better now, but it used to be like she was hitting like uh, Dury uh, at MP1 was hitting harder than BB, and then he also had class advantage uh, for context on how low Summer BB's damage actually was.
like a four star was doing more damage than her while she had all these buffs like the mp damage and the buster up uh and that's with his 30 percent arts buff and that's not even taking into consideration that he didn't have class advantage either yeah so if you want pb you can just they kind of they kind of held her back all right so we are on the fun stuff now we are truly at the fun servants oh right sorry uh no no no. we haven't finished the guy so i will say this straight up this is a banner i am personally looking at going after why because there are barely servants i barely have servants on here i have Kama at mp1 and that is it just comma i want reigns and i'm going to summon for her uh when she gets her mp buff in january i would like juna and i will summon for him uh in march next year when i know he gets his rate up with Haldea boys murasaki will pick up would like to get her but not too worried but i don't have these three servants so that is a 75 percent chance of me getting a new servant that i actually do i actually plan on summoning for this is this will save me a lot of courts summoning for these servants if i snipe one of them off the gsr gives me way more breathing room uh and i can possibly go for a different servant reigns is better in challenge quest than waiver my personal opinion she is better for the stall situation because instead of giving you extra damage she makes you not take as much damage uh she removes class disadvantage so berserkers can hit people uh like they're an alter ego not like beast uh nero not like draco but he's he's starting he'll be able to actually hit people and they'll actually be able to survive. She she just enables a lot of berserkers to not get breathed on and die. Murasaki is a farmer, uh, anti-demonic. Demonic is a very common trait in trash mobs, so she gets she gets to overkill a lot easier than most other units in her position. Kama ch charm locks. I just talked about her and watch her get a buff fucking tomorrow. I would not be surprised, and then I'm pissed. Juna, enough said about him. Also have a video out recently of him, and he is just like so good for like if you know you're you're gonna be able to debuff your enemies, he's gonna hit so hard. You need man loading with him to get him farming, but like you kind of if you're bringing him to challenge quest, you kind of don't care about the farming. Like he just is monstrous with the buster crits. So this banner, in terms of four stars, Double X is probably the best one on here because she's a foreigner. Ushi gets a buff next anniversary. Ash, uh, Ashvatman is Storylock, so is Guchan. And Ibaraki is also Storylocked. Miu is limited, but Miu is, and Miu is going to get her buff very soon. Very soon. That is actually going to make her usable and not have a MP that literally kills her. Like they get, they, this is mini Merlin MP. This is 100% a mini Merlin MP. And she just gets so much better. Asclepius is the, Asclepius and Red Hair are story lock three stars. So again, this is a very, these two banners are very appealing if you need the servant coins for them. Asclepius kind of do want the servant coins for more, uh, to be, have more options with their setups and like help servants get overcharged to help them loot better. The, uh, Lu, what can I say about Ryder Lubu? It's Lubu as a writer. I don't know why I don't even know why I said that those two words red hair that uh, this is this should be reading Lu Bu. Four banners left. And they kind of did they did 
these men are sturdy. Ah, uh, okay. So Saber Stolfo again. Video recently, uh, how his kit is very conf is a confused mess, and that makes so much sense for Astolfo. Uh, he, they need to do something about Astolfo because his kit really, uh, it really doesn't make sense. There are better single target five star servants out there uh, with an easier kit to play around. He is kind of a detriment to himself to the point like he would like ruler scotty but ruler scotty wouldn't even help him that much ruler scotty would help him like one card every three rotations and that, that's just not enough say i don't have the biggest thing uh, biggest praise for say as a actual unit as a character i think she like she gets the calm characters that normally would be sitting in the background and like brings them to the stage and makes makes forces them to get over their stage right. Like you do not have the option with say she will make you get over your stage right or you're just going to curl into a ball and cry at yourself and then she's going to try to cover for you. Uh, her niche, you're not, she, she widespreads her niche. You're very rarely going to get multiple of them like at the same time and i think for farmers we have a new uh there are just better options even from lower rarity you wouldn't be going here for her for farming you'd be going for like boss or more hybrid uh comps that involve another dps like clearing away for you like a rash or a Paras paracelsus super orion is He is someone that you don't need supports for, but if you want to see like ridiculous unga bunga damage, and I'm talking like hitting 88, 8 million damage per buster crit or for a buster crit at the end of a brave buster chain, you can probably get it off your friends list. But if you have the supports for him, you have Vich, you also have Oberon, uh, no, no, sorry, not Oberon, Merlin. You can witness him hit so fucking hard. Like, he, like, he's net, like, he's one of the servants that are never going to get a buff. Like, his kit is just so strong. He, like, he is the Melison for Buster Crits. That that is that is the example I want to give. He is the equivalent to Melison, but for Buster Prince. <sighs> Roma, he can be good in meme setups. Uh, with the command code that came out, he is significantly he got a significant buff because now he can uh, put Roman trait on his face guard. So like first turn, you pop that command code, and then he is full like wait. Yeah, let me just double check how this works. Okay, so you pop the command code first and then MP, and then he will get his bone benefits. Uh, you're still going to want to pop this turn one. Uh, the command code isn't going to do anything about this part of the skill, but this is still a strong ish skill. Uh, it's Ishtar's skill with extra steps. Again, when I say Ishtar's charisma needs buff, it's because it's like so many servants have it and have a better version of it. Like, Ran Roma is not the best, like, is like an anti example. Of course, his charisma is gonna be really strong, but Ishtar, I think, needs a, it could use the buff. Uh, Next, this one is the Arts Farming Dream. If you are a huge fan of Arts units, this is the GSSR for you. You have Rider Da Vinci, you have Space Ishtar, and you have Musashi. These are like three of the premier Arts loopers that you will see people recommend the majority of time on NA and in the past. In the future, going forward, not nearly as much. Da Vinci is still always going to be like relevant because of the for challenge quest because she's charging your support so much that your arts uptime is ridiculous. Like 
using Da Vinci Castori and Tomo, you should not die. You should not be dying. Whenever you need a cleanse, you'll have it. Whenever you need cooldown reduction, you will have it. Whenever you need a heal, you're going to have it. Like, arch spamming with a basically double arch chain bonus for Da Vinci's MP is... I don't want to say it's irreplaceable, but it trivializes some content. Especially the Daikoku uh, Koten fight that we get for a bunion event. You're, you're going to be set. Da Vinci is going to do a lot of AoE damage and your supports are not are going to be fine and like can take care of Da Vinci and stop her if she even gets downtime. Because if this is, if her golden rule is a five turn, it's not, it's six. Uh, you might only have one downturn of this and then Tomomo is going to keep like going to either you're already going to have the MP or Tomomo will reduce cooldown and then next turn you can pop this again. And then Castoria's skills will also come off cooldown and then Da Vinci should be good to go. Musashi, she is she was not meant to be a farmer, but her second skill is so goddamn good that she became one of the best farmers. Summer Buki is far far stronger as a farmer than Musashi but they're not Ibuki is for farming Musashi is more for harder content she has a guts she has a dodge attack up defense down uh invil pierce stuff summer Ibuki does not have funny Toria very similar situation for BB except she shuffles the cards and then makes sure one servant is not going to get their cards pulled. <sighs> if she could use be used better in conjunction with Summer BB, it, like it would mitigate the RNG, but you can only plug suit so much. And if you are pop her first and then swap into BB, well, now you don't have a support. You're missing a support for one of your main DPS. I'm sure there are ways you can set it up, but they are you are really going for min turns at that point and i don't know how much it's worth it space star i have so much praise for space star for being like if you have her you basically are able to do buster and art sleeping at the same time it just depends on you uh like say you have say like you want to try buster farming and you have space star from all your arts looping you can go right into doing bitch farming immediately and it's great but she's not the best at it that is what they've tried to do over the years they did not want to make spacious char be like good at everything a lot of other servants are just straight up better than her at certain things Like you see here, if you're not using Oberon, a buster farming with space Ishtar. Oh, sorry. Let, no, let's uh, compare apples, uh, apples to apples. Space Ishtar with, uh, without plug suit hits way harder than buster space Ishtar with a super, like with a super scope. That that's just the nature. Black rail versus a super scope. Black rail is gonna do so much damage. Uh, when it comes to buster farming, again, Art Space Ishtar is going to hit way harder because of this Black Rail. Now, if you are not able to use Black Rail, Space Ishtar looks a lot more similar to Buster Space Ishtar. But that's just the advantage Space Ishtar has. Uh, you should never use Space Ishtar as a quick servant. Uh, TLDR. Uh, she has such low hit count on her quick side, like they should have tripled this. They needed to triple her quick version of her MP. Otherwise, like I'm never going to use this. Why, why would, I, if we're talking refund, unironically, I think uh, space, no, not space, uh, Summer Okita would refund better. Even though she's gonna stun herself, she would refund better than Space Ishtar on quick. Yeah. And I really don't like Summer o uh, Okita as a farmer. Uh, I, If I had to choose between her and Space Ishtar on quick, I would choose uh, 
some rope. So. Voyager, he does a lot better uh, with his buff. But uh, when he gets his buff, he's more going to be like kind of your generic X like he's if you need someone for xp farming he's probably going to be one of the best uh because right here just super scope damage like that kills pretty much every single enemy in an xp farming node and you're not worried about class he's gonna kill it's just like his refund is gonna be a little bit of an issue with his buff like and him getting a better quick buff it's better for him but he's still going to be struggling his refund isn't the highest he just has a he has a lower floor meaning he has a higher minimum refund he gets but his ceiling is not nearly as high as some like someone like dante's which in my original like playing of the game my first year i thought voyager was a better version of dante's that is definitely not true now 100 percent, that is not true uh yeah, like he's he's similar in nature to Da Vinci, but like for quick, you need way more. You would need way more gain than you do arts for it to be viable for you to be loading your supports. It makes sense for arts to get the twenty, but like quick, it, it's like it happens. It, cool, they're moving on. Gang Guife. I have a. Okay, so my Yang is not leveled. Her skill cooldowns are atrocious, and that's on me. So I don't have the best. If you look at my content, uh, like, because I just used her to fight Morgan last night, she's not gonna look the best. But my the cooldowns and the levels for them are literally atrocious to the point that she looks a lot worse. But if you are able to maintain burns on someone, aka not fighting morgan who takes the burns off every single turn so that was really on me i only brought her because she was a foreigner and morgan would do less damage so i wouldn't have to reset more than once i feel embarrassed but i feel, I feel like morgan is like one of the fights in the game that you are probably using a crystal nine times out of ten you like most accounts are not built to be able to fight morgan without resetting Uh, but she is extreme. Like, don't, don't let my words there. Like me venting the frustration on like me not being good enough to do it. Uh, Yang is very good. She's a foreigner. You can do some of her damage type neutral. Uh, Honey Lake is something you can use with her because uh, her MP is a super effect. Honey Lake is power mod. Uh, Black Rail kind of just works better for multiplying, but again, Black Rail is only MP damage. Yang. Uh, if you give her Honey Lake, gets power mod on her face guard, which power mod and super effective do multiply with each other. Well, MP damage and power mod do not. They add together. So you have options with her that you wouldn't normally have with other servants. And you can put her in command codes on to like help enable her niche. With Honey Lake and with uh, the MP. And her taunt, like... I, I feel like right now I'm making Yang saying sound a lot worse than she actually is. But like basically, if, as long as you're fighting someone that doesn't remove debuff, she's going to be very good for you. It's just that like <sighs> the servants that you would actually need to use her like Morgan, she like Morgan is so strong, like she, a niche like this wouldn't help. Yeah, good. Yang literally doesn't help you that much with Morgan besides her being in a uh, foreigner. There aren't many other, and let me just like peep the foreigner list. Like, yeah, like literally going off this, there is no foreigner that will actually help you deal with Morgan besides maybe Abigail. Maybe Abigail. Because Abigail has the buff strip. Like, I think Morgan is probably one of the best fights for, like, OG Abigail because of her buff strip on her MP. Because, like, part of the thing with dealing with Morgan is that you can 
when she breaks her third bar, you can rip off some of those buffs so she's not literally decimating all of your all of your team. If you're able to use someone, say Muramasa, who can rip off like offensive buffs, you're gonna be set. Abiel is just like happens to that happens to actually be a very good fight for her. I just don't have Abigail. And I know I kind of shit on her earlier in this video, but like Morgan as like the one reason you would summon, like you would go on this banner for maybe Abigail to maybe deal with Morgan when the game literally gives you quartz just like, yeah, no, this, this is not gonna work. I'm not wasting 500 AP to try and beat Morgan legit when I can just clear through it. Cause that's the, that's the issue I came with last night. Do I like ego this? And yeah, do I ego and like try to brute force Morgan fight, even if it's like gonna frustrate me or just like move on so I can like do other stuff? Like, yes, it would, it would be more stream content if I'm struggling, but I'm if I get bored, I'm just, I was gonna do it anyway if I didn't get it. Morgan is an exceptionally hard fight that literally her own mechanic stops most servants from working correctly. Like Van Gogh is basically useless against Morgan because Morgan is not going to get terrored. It's not going to work well. People that are heavily reliant on debuffs cannot deal with Morgan well. So let us talk about these servants. Now, all of these servants are limited which makes this banner uh, like an extremely appealing like pull every single one like canis is the only one on here and mendricardo that canis is story lock mendricardo is in the welfare so you get a four star here you're more likely than not going to get a servant that you probably don't have uh canis would be the only one that has interludes so if that's what you're looking for like sure but all of the calamity jane is the best pickup you can get from here she is like she is basically homes but functions so well with buster with the vich buster vich system because she needs stars to get her main effect Vich gives 20 and you usually run two viches so you'll have 40 i mean you can give ignore invul or three turns so basically homes np are like the big part people really care about homes np and then you can run her with a uh, taunt and have her die and then cycle out <sighs> uh little known fact about this buff success rate is on here so he, like she actually get like and this is at max rank she guarantees imperial privilege for servants which is cool i actually did forget about this and it's not even a one turn thing like Ozzy, it's for three turns. So if you're able to act like, say Ozzy didn't have his uh, battery that gave buff success rate to everyone in the party. This would like his cooldowns are low enough that if you double stack bitch, you would be able to pop them again before this ran out. So people like Cleo. Yeah, actually, uh, double check that. Um, um so main use case would be cleo and i believe cleo does have invul pierce no she doesn't yeah no so for cleo calamity jane is like probably one of the best pickups you can like you can get like all of this i believe is stuff cleo does not have yeah none of this stuff is something cleo has right yeah no these are all new buffs for cleo so calamity jane kind of like cleans up cleo's kit and she's a cleo is a buster servant so you actually would have her being used with bitch uh calamity jane is a big servant that i think i needed to like really talk about for these for this banner uh and yes so last two 
we are going to start over here though because these are going to take longer and these are two two of the biggest uh banners for people because of the servants on here saito Bargist, Ilya, uh babansi percival murasaki all of these units are very strong for what they do. Ilya is a very good farmer for quick. Uh, contempt, like contestable with Atalanta. I personally prefer Ilya just because her kit's more modern. Uh, these servants are good, and that's a, that is more than 50% of the five stars on here are someone that you would actually want to get spooked by. Or not spooked, but you'd actually want. Bryn, uh, Suna, and Tomoe, not nearly as good, but they are usable. And Tomoe is, for what it's worth, she is a very good crit, arts crit servant. Like, she hits good numbers. It's just, she can use, she needs the help. She definitely needs the help. Uh, they added all of these three stars uh, real quick. One, two... I actually think every single story lock three star is on here. Uh, I do want to double check that. So who caster is you? Uh, is Bedivir on here? Yes, Bedivir is on here. Is Taiga on here? Yes. Salieri is on here. Lube, Ryder Lubu is on here. Asclepius is on here. Yeah, so these last two banners have very strong four stars that you have a 50 50 chance of getting a strong one or someone that's, or ones that are like conditionally very good. The three stars have all the starry lock servants. Do you have a good chance of getting the one you want? Nope. But you have the chance. You are not on these banners for the three stars. You might only be on here for the four stars and the five stars. And boy, are these monstrous. So how many of these are like top tier farmers? One, two, three, easily top tier farmer. Uh, five, I would say Karen after her buff, I would count her on here. So six, we have 13 units six of them are that are the six of them that are a oe are top tier farmers kiara is not top tier but she can do the farming you need to make it work a lot more than the others uh and she but she is way better in boss fights top tier supports castoria is one of the best supports in the game if not the best servant in the game Imiko is a ruler servant that enables the shit out of buster crits. Domen can also be a farmer, but he, like for chaotic evil servants, he is one of the strongest. Abigail is one of the strongest debuffers in the game with buff strip like crazy and like applying like defense down and buster res down. Van Gogh, I shouldn't. Oh my god, the stupid shit you can do with Van Gogh. Like, you like you think Charm Lock, uh, comma, is bad? You should see Double Van Gogh, like, actually, like, fucking over bosses. Like, you... Because then you're getting two Terra procs, like, every turn. Your foreigner, like, crit damage is, gets ridiculous. The best support for a Van Gogh is another Van Gogh. And then you'd also be running, say, Jacques... Was it like you'd be running another foreigner with the existence outside the domain trait? Like Jox just happens to be another quick one that just functions very well with them. But Domen also gets like Van Gogh gets buff buffed by Domen. Miss Crane and is can enable some really fun sh stuff. Is she the most meta? No, and she's very hard to use. Uh, like truly to the best of her potential. But she's still good. Morgan. AoE Buster Farmer with a 50% battery. You can use her with Oberon or you don't have to. 
she's gonna do good damage no matter what. And then the oddball we have here is Tyra. And Tyra is one of the best solo servants in the game with a one time three turn guts on a four turn cooldown. She has relatively low cooldowns, power mods, crit damage, out the wazoo. It... These two banners just show how strong the servants are that came out this year. Almost all of them are very close to the top of their class for what they do, if not at the top. For my top recommendations, I want to say straight up, go for the banner that would make you the happiest of any servant you will pick. If you don't have Castoria, I will say this is probably one of the strongest banners you can get for a Castoria. But your odds aren't the best. The best, uh, the strongest banner, in my opinion, is actually this one, just because you're, you're more like if you summon on this banner, you only care about the five stars. This, your, like, your hope is going to get up that you get a good 4-star and a good 5-star, but your odds are not good. This this banner has so many good servants, but there that's the problem. There are so many servants here that you probably aren't going to get the one you want. These GSSRs are your account your choice you can't be going off what i say because you might hate you might hate hate how van gogh plays or kiara kiara would be a better example you might hate how kiara plays i think she's one of the like strongest challenge quest servants in the game but you might not like her as a character and thus you would not want to use her period so like, if you get Kiara, it doesn't matter how good she are, she is. You're never gonna use her. I like for me, this is the one I would want to go on the most. With me, like with how my summoning has gone, I got Melison. I don't have a reason to summon on here. I legitimately have every single servant on this banner with this one there's no reason me, for me to even go on these banners anymore not this one because i again i have m most of these servants i don't have da vinci on this account but i don't need her i don't have half of them here i don't have most of them here the only one i have com is comma i have all of these servants i have two of these servants nothing here on this account so very appealing i would guarantee you get a new character this one i have half of them this one i have only musashi another appealing one this one i think i have all these servants except the scander so nope one of the worst rates and not needing characters nope four stars and three stars being shit nope this one i have half the units and two are ones I'd rather not get. So, chat, I'm going to leave this to you. If you made it to the end of the video, I am leaving you guys my choice for GSSRs. Am I pulling on this banner to guarantee get a new character? Or am I going to pull on this one to get the strongest character? and possibly like make my account just that much better. Save me a whole lot of quartz and heartbreak. I will put this decision up to you as a community post shortly after this video comes out. Please remember to enter the giveaway because I'm happy to support all the people that are supporting me, give you guys a chance to pull the GSSR. And it doesn't help that like on Twitch, 
I don't stream that much anymore. You guys can't get channel points to guarantee it. Uh, I'm sorry about that, but that's more Twitch than anything else that you guys have done. Thank you for, so much for the support over the years. Uh, hopefully we uh, start hitting start hitting our stride. Uh, maybe next year I will be like fully partnered on YouTube and like making ad revenue and making better videos. Hope to see you guys in the next one. Peace. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like, comment, sub, all that good YouTube stuff. I'm putting this at the end of the video because I'm really bad about selling out mid video. So thank you for watching.